I'm Scott L. Miller. This is Sam IT, my program where we take information technology and business and bring them together. Today, I'm going to be talking about an important topic, especially if you're a business owner or a CEO, someone who's managing technology for a company and may have to make some decisions. So in many cases, I expect that an IT professional may be sending this to you. This is meant for kind of a cross-section of audiences. Today, we're going to be talking about why having a unique domain for your business and why using that for your email and website are incredible incredibly important for security and privacy reasons, which may be very non-obvious. This is very important, so let's get to that. Now, it's common to talk about having your own custom URL domain name from a marketing perspective. If you're looking at this from a marketing perspective, side of things, putting on your marketing hat, having this is just an important way of identifying yourself as a brand and making your company something that stands out to your customers. In this day and age, everyone knows that a domain only costs about $9. Setting up a website is free if you have put in a little bit of effort. Email is free. None of these things cost anything. So someone starting up a business and not putting in that effort really looks like they haven't really figured out what they're doing, haven't listened to anybody, have not paid any attention to their customers. It's so just basic and simple and cheap that it makes people wonder what's going on. If you start emailing someone from a Gmail account, it doesn't matter how small your business is, a 15-year-old starting up a lemonade stand business is going to go out and spend the $9 to come up with a brand that is their URL to put somewhere. For every little casual project I ever come up with, the first thing we do is start with that URL. We go out and buy that domain. It is so cheap, it is so easy, it is so frictionless, and it's such a fundamental start part of all business. So from a marketing perspective, it is absolutely expected and assumed that you will do this. So that's one piece. There's a really strong, it doesn't matter what the tech or security or anything like that is. It's this really obvious you need to do this. To a point that many vendors that you're now working with will simply not consider you to be a viable business if you do not have one. I regularly work with customers who are like, well, can I just use my Gmail? And they'll talk to a vendor and the vendor will block their mail and say, send us a true email that you can verify came from you. You are not Google. We can't verify that you're Gmail. And they get very confused, but more and more companies are not willing to work with someone who's not willing to give them their own email name and something that regularly consumers are advised on is not to do business with someone who is not doing these things. It's something to look for as a potential customer, whether you're B2B or you're dealing with regular customers, if they see something that isn't your domain in your email address, it immediately either does or should set off red flags that something is wrong. Maybe you're not really that company. Maybe you're not a serious company. Maybe you haven't incorporated yet. Maybe it's a 12-year-old pretending to be in the business. It doesn't matter. They're concerned what's wrong that you don't have business email and a private branded domain. It's just, it's so simple that it doesn't make sense to people. So that is a framework from which the world has then used this mechanism of private domain ownership to create very critical security mechanisms that protect your data. Now, email traditionally gets a very bad, bad rap for being insecure, but that is not correct. Email is an extremely secure platform when it's done correctly, and more and more vendors are pushing to require that people do it correctly. So this comes up just a few weeks after Google and many other major providers have agreed to start enforcing security measures that have been available for more than a decade, in many cases about 12 years. These include things like sender policy framework, DMARC certificates, and so forth. So forth. These mechanisms are the things that provide the ability to positively identify and prove that email is coming from who you think it is coming from, or at least from the server that you think it's coming from. It allows the system to self-identify and prove that it is who it says that it is, as well as requiring things like TLS certificates that provide a security for the path of the email. And of course, optionally, you can use things like GPG to encrypt the payload if you need to go even further and protect a individual mailbox recipient from their email delivery mechanisms if they were to work on an untrusted one. However, in most cases, that's not something that normal people need to worry about, and it's outside the scope of this particular video. The reason that we want to talk about domain names and how they're used here is that they provide at a level of security and privacy that you may not realize, and many people who are using Gmail, Hotmail, whatever, as a free 
public shared email service, don't realize they're giving up. If you have a company, bobscats.com, and you decide to email someone from that email address, it provides some very important things. One is that you can tell someone that it is your domain. Oh, I own bobscats.com. And you can send someone to your website. Go check my website, bobscats.com. They can go do a lookup on bobscats.com and find out information about who owns it. Now, in some cases, that is hidden, and that may be okay, but you can also make that public to prove that it is registered to you if you should decide so. But what you can do is when you have an what we call an authenticated conversation, that could be in person where you're literally standing in a store. You're standing in their pet store that sells all the cat stuff. And Bob, the owner, says, ah, welcome to Bob's Cats. You can identify us online because we have bobscats.com. And you say, okay, awesome. I know you're a human. I know this is your store. I know these are cat supplies. Now I know that the person in the store that I met, whose name is Bob, that showed me his, his tax ID number, whatever you need to feel comfortable with that human interaction, probably not that much, you will now know that they use that as their identifier and they can put it on their on their, on their um, public advertising, they can put it on their Instagram, anything they want, they can share that and you can then use that website as a way to verify other things. You can go to that website and say, oh, here's their phone number. If I call that number, I have confidence that this is their website and the information that's on it is correct or at least that they're responsible for it. That first piece is very important, but we take it a step further. You can then send email to someone at bobscats.com or you can receive email from someone at bobscats.com and you hope that that is coming from bobscats.com and that you have an assurance that that is who they really say they are. Now, on its own, just owning that domain, someone could still spoof your email. The thing about the new technologies that are enabled through the ownership of this domain, things like sender policy framework and DMARC records, allows uh, email administrators, the people who actually run your email servers, whether that's just someone running a hosted service or the uh, someone who's actually running a completely dedicated server, it could go either way, they're able to go into your domain name ownership system DNS, and in there, they can designate specific servers that are allowed to represent bobscats.com. This is super important. By doing that, they actually publish this information, so it's very easy to look up, and it's completely automatic. This is done by your email system. When you receive an email, the your email system will go out, look at this information in the domain record system, in the domain name system, and by looking at that, it'll say, okay, who is allowed to send email as bobscats.com. And then it'll check the email that it's received and see if it came from an authorized system. If it did come from an authorized system, then you know that the people who own bobscats.com, presumably Bob, has authorized the email to be sent to you. It doesn't mean that he's personally authorized it. It means that the system that it came from is controlled by him or at least authorized by him. It is the official bobscats.com server or one of a number of them. This gives you a great degree of assurance and privacy that you know you're reading something that really came from that system. And when you respond to it, you know that it's going to go back to them. This is very important because your email system can now detect when someone is sending you fake emails. If I was to go out and craft an email and pretend I was bobscats.com, that is very easy to do. And it is a traditional joke we used to play on each other 30 years ago when working in IT. You would send people email from the President of the United States and you could make it look identical and in completely impossible to detect different from the actual president at whitehouse.gov address. Anybody could send from that and still can, and it will work just fine. But as long as the White House publishes its list of which uh, email servers are allowed to represent it, then immediately when you receive that email, your system will say this is obviously a scam and it should not even deliver it to you in nearly all cases. And production systems like those run by Google and Microsoft and Zoho do not deliver it when it violates those policies because it is black and white. That is not legitimate email. No legitimate email will ever break that. Now, once in a while, people have their systems uh, messed up a little bit and they have to be fixed. That does happen. But this is a, a very, very simple standard and at this point, mature technology for making sure that you are able to verify that the email source is legitimate and using TLS certificates, which require the domain name. You can't have a fully uh, verified TLS certificate without one. 
is also coming from the right place. You are, it is worth noting, you are able to secure the transit of communications even if you don't have a domain name. You could go use and see some of my videos if you ever want to see it. You could just use an IP address to send an email and you can still use a TLS certificate, but that TLS certificate can only encrypt the channel. You can't use that TLS certificate to verify that the sender is truly who they say they are. Whereas if you have a domain name that you own and that TLS certificate is registered against it, then you have an additional level of security. So these things layer on top of each other to create an extremely high degree of trust in email and a high degree of privacy and encryption that allows you to know that when you're receiving an email, it really came from who someone says that they are. There's always the possibility that someone's going to uh, create a fake domain that is bobcat.com and not bobscats.com and pretend to be him and you don't notice that the name is different and your system may not detect that it's a similar name because it is truly a different name. How is a computer supposed to know that it just looks similar to a human? It doesn't necessarily, but at least you'll have the ability to say, okay, this is someone I've received email from before. This is someone that I sent email to. It is actually them and, and verify all that. And when you're talking to customers, this is super important because if they receive an email from you at Gmail, they can verify that it came from Google, because Gmail does go through these steps. But because Gmail is open to the public and anybody can send an email from Gmail, they can only verify that Google handled the email, which is all but useless to them. They can't tell who is the person behind the Google account. And honestly, Google can't tell either. They have a pretty good guess. They have a lot of AI that detects that stuff, but they're relying on AI to figure out who it is. They do not actually know who you are. They don't actually know your first name, last name, who you're associated with, they have to guess and put that together. So because Google doesn't know for sure, no one else can know either. They're trusting that your system on Google is really you based on nothing. So it's a very simple mechanism, and there's a reason why people rely on this. It works, it's simple, and because of the marketing thing, because of the maturity of this system, there's really no excuse not to have it. It is super simple, incredibly cheap, essentially free, and it works extremely well. By doing these simple steps, you can have a very high level of confidence in your communications with your customers, with other members of your team, with your vendors, and so forth. So I hope that this highlights the importance of having a domain of your own and using it, not just for your website, which is where most people, most companies feel that they should use it, but then fail to do so because they think email with that is going to be hard. Maybe they started with a Gmail account or something else that's free and they think, well, I'll just keep using this or they think that it's going to be expensive to move to something. It is free. There is enterprise email such as Zoho that can replace free Gmail services. This will up your security. This will give you a far better marketing presence. It will give you a larger market of both vendors and customers who are willing to work with you because you're presenting as a legitimate company. It is good for everyone. If you need to, you can do simple free things like having your Gmail account forward to a new enterprise account or vice versa. You don't have to use that vendor. There are plenty of vendors that provide good enterprise email at low cost and some at high cost, but that's what you want. You have options, but it can be free, especially if you already own your domain name. Every piece of that puzzle can be free, except for the domain name itself, which is about $9 per year if you shop around. A good example is Cloudflare. I did mention them in the last video. I really don't represent them in any way, but it's who we use for a lot of things. You can register a domain on there, a .com, for about $9 and change. They offer DNS hosting services for free, which is something that's very important. They even offer proxy services, which we will not cover here, for free. Web hosting can be done for extremely cheap or free. Good websites can be hosted for free with vendors like GitLab. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, email hosting from someone like Zoho is free on a very small scale where you just have a few accounts. But of course, if you're using Gmail, you only have a few accounts or possibly one. So it solves a lot of things for just $9 a year and a tiny bit of IT know-how. Any qualified IT professional should be able to help you without any problem at all. These are very basic things, but sometimes explaining just how important this is may be something that they need this video for. So that's why I made this, so that IT professionals could share this with their customers to help them understand why this is so important, what it does, and that there's really not necessarily any cost or reason to be concerned about it. It's just the right way to do business. If you don't have an IT uh, solution provider or an IT staff that's able to do this or that wants to do this, you can contact my firm, of course, ntg.co. I've worked there for 25 years and we provide assistance for IT departments where they need it or entire IT departments for companies that don't have an IT team. 
whatever you need. We would love to talk to you. You can reach out at sales at ntg.co. All the information is, of course, down in the show notes. If you are an IT professional and you're interested in some of my work, I wrote the book, Linux Administration Best Practices. Uh, I would absolutely love it if you went on Amazon and bought a copy. That would be really, really cool. And of course, anyone can sponsor this program by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And uh, if you need to contact me or anything, get down in the show notes. I will see you next time.